Hey guys, today we're going to talk about my new tent from Big Agnes, the Fly Creek UL2, and more specifically why I chose this tent over the other two tents that I was comparing it to. Actually, before I get started here, I need to go check the garage refrigerator. Mama knows best. Not the most popular tent in the market today, and when I tell you the other two tents that I almost chose over this one, you're going to wonder why. So I probably should give you some context here. So I use a lot of non-freestanding tents, so trekking pole tents, and I was going to go on a five-day trip this summer to somewhere very, very rocky. I decided for that trip I wanted a freestanding tent. Now this is a semi-freestanding tent, as are all the tents I'm going to be talking about today. I didn't want to have to be looking around for rocks to try to get perfect tension on my tent, like a loser. Now this tent really caught my attention. Hey, over here. Okay, so the other two, t this tent gets a bad rap. Now this tent doesn't have the best history with people. <laughs> Come on. It's got some flaws and there have been some newer, uh, more interesting tents that came out within the same price range of this. So it's definitely not the most popular thing on the market anymore. Now I was deciding between the Fly Creek, the Big Agnes Tiger Wall, and the Nemo Hornet. Now hearing that, I know some of you are like, why? Why did you not get one of those other two options? I'm gonna tell you why. Sorry about all the dog panting, but they just really wanna be in the video today. Now the Tiger Wall and the Nemo Hornet, both side entry tents. That's the number one reason I think why they are so much more popular than this. This obviously is a front front entry tent. I had a little bit of buyer's remorse. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. I just thought, remember back when I first went to side entry tents, because I started out with front, front entry like this. And when I first got that side entry feel, it's nice. But this one won the battle in my eyes. And I'm going to tell you why front entry tents actually have some pros over side entry tents. And this is something I actually didn't even think about at all until I used this for several nights. And I really just kept thinking, how much better it actually was than a side entry tent. So what I like to do when I get my tent set up is I like to pretty much empty out all the contents of my pack into the tent. So uh, I only have like a few stuff sacks, most of my small stuff's in like one bag, but I will just put my sleeping pad in the center of the tent and I'll just start throwing all the contents of my pack into my tent on either side of the sleeping pad. So here we have your standard I guess it's not standard, it's a 25 inch wide pad. Lots of room uh, on all these two man shelters for one person. I always throw all my contents in the side like I said and whenever it's a side entry, I find that I always kind of have to like reach around the corner and throw stuff around this way or, or that way. And this is just kind of nice because I can stand all the way back here and just toss. <laughs> Even the sleeping pad on a side entry tent, you got to put it in and then like turn and fish it up. This, you just throw everything in straight and it is very convenient. Now, one of the complaints with this tent is that being front entry, front vestibule, you have to crawl over anything that you have in your vestibule if you were to store your pack or anything out here. But that's why this tent is great in the two man version for one person. I have so much room inside there. I literally. I haven't kept anything out here other than like a, maybe a pair of shoes. I can keep everything inside. I just have tons of room and I have no need to crawl over any gear. But another advantage of the front entry tent, lots of room front to back. I don't always like sitting on my sleeping pad when I'm cooking under a vestibule and stuff. I do it a lot, especially if it's cold because I'm not sitting my on the freezing ground. But when I take my uh, like Thermarest Uberlite that I'm like just scared to sit on, I'm scared every time I get on that thing. I don't always want to be sitting on that. So one cool thing, I can just shove my pad out of the, <laughs> that's nice, it bounces right back. Just like shove my stuff out of the way. And then I have full, full open area here. So it's like when I, when I get in a side entry tent, that sleeping pad's always like shoved up the wall. This, I can just easily, uh, even to the stuff on the side here, just shove it straight back and I have like open area. And I get that you can kind of do that in a side entry tent, but I just feel like it's it's just a little bit easier with this. And not gonna lie, the head space in this tent being 40 inches now rather than their old version of 38, it is sufficient. I actually also enjoy these side pockets. They're a goofy triangular design. I've, I've had this in tents before. Even though I don't keep a lot of stuff in there, I'll keep like a watch, maybe a headlamp. And I also like to put my water bottles in here because I don't, I just don't like laying my bottles on the side, especially when using those stupid smart water 
uh, flip top caps. Just nice having somewhere that, that holds them up straight. So tent selection process. What was I thinking? So here's my criteria. I wanted freestanding or semi-freestanding. I wanted it uh, around two pounds and that was about it. So let me give you a little story, paint the picture for you here. I like one man shelters. I'm a small dude, five foot eight, 145. I can fit in one person shelters very easily. Now you've already noticed this is a two person and there's a story behind that. So basically I did all this research on all three of these tents, all one person designs and it was getting down to the wire to leave for the trip and I decided I'm just gonna take my old trusty North Face tent. It weighs four pounds. I'd save the money. Don't go buy other tents. I can throw some Nick Wax, some DWR coating on that old tent. Bring it back to life. Make sure it's gonna stand up to the Pacific Northwest rains. Now fast forward to two days before I fly out to Washington State. So now it's way too risky to even use Amazon Prime to get a tent here in time. So I drive 45 minutes north to a local outfitter and basically they had all three tents that I was looking at but in two man versions. And that changed everything. Although the Fly Creek is very similar to the one man version, the uh, Tiger Wall and the Nemo Hornet, they are completely different shelters altogether. Now, had they had any one-man versions of any of these three tents, it probably would have swayed my decision in the favor of that tent because I was going back and forth, literally. I thought about this really hard. And to be completely honest, if I was going to get a one-man tent, I don't know if the Fly Creek would have been my first choice, but I'll tell you why it was for the two-man tent. So the footprint of the uh, Fly Creek here just was smaller. All these tents in the one-man version had one door, one vestibule, but the uh, the Tiger Wall and the Hornet, they had two doors and two vestibules on the two-man versions. Although very convenient, and this is nitpicking, but I mean, this whole video is pretty much nitpicking if you wanna be honest, but I'm just one guy and I sleep in tents most of the time by myself, so I don't need two doors. It's, it's not an inconvenience for me to only have one door, and I certainly don't need two vestibules. And I just kept thinking in my head, how many times do you find a tent spot that is very tiny? That's literally the size of this uh, ground sheet right here. Very often, I just did not want the huge footprint. A lot of people kind of dog in this tent as well because it doesn't have a lot of room inside, but once again, two person shelters here. So all these tents were gonna be super roomy for me. I actually sat in my chair in this tent on my last trip uh, because the mosquitoes were so bad. So I set up just the net tent as a bug net and just chilled in here in my chair and I had plenty of room. So the door was something that, uh, I, that's what gave me buyer's remorse. I wasn't sure if I was gonna enjoy this because I like to kind of lay sideways in my side entry tent and kind of look outside. This, you're gonna be laying on your stomach or your back and you're not really gonna wanna look out your, your uh, hole here. <laughs> so the HV solution dyed version of this tent is now two inches higher. So two inches actually makes a big difference when you're talking about a small shelter like this. The number one best thing about this new upgrade is if you've noticed, the vestibule is different. So this vestibule utilizes two stakes out in the front of it like this. You actually have some room that you could do cooking and stuff in here. A lot of these front entry tents only have the one point and they come at an angle down here and you really can't cook or do anything worthwhile in there but store your backpack. So the old version of this tent, you would stake out here and there as well, but the zipper to get inside of the actual tent or inside the vestibule came up this ridge right here. So it was kind of nice because you could stake out your vestibule and you could always get in and out without removing a stake. This new design, since it opens up on the side, uh, it's a little goofy because if you want to have your full open vestibule, you want to take this one off of the stake, which really isn't an issue. So I uh, will roll it up like that, or there was actually one night when I just left it just like this, and I can tie this string off to a pull out over there to get a little bit of ventilation here, but it's, it's still kind of closed off. But that makes a huge difference because even before, the zipper would come up and it would come, it wouldn't even go all the way up to the top here. So it was literally like this little tunnel that you had to crawl through to get inside your tent and they fixed that issue. Now one bad thing about this tent and probably the Tiger Wall I'm guessing is it's wind resistance. So you get a lot of winds, this thing starts bowing left and right and it starts like collapsing in on itself and you think you can kind of compensate for it with these tie outs but the thing is that the tie outs don't really like attach to the inner structure of the tent at all. Like, uh, you can kind of have some Velcro tabs to hook onto the poles, but up top here, 
Um, tying that out really does nothing to help in high winds. The Tiger Wall tent has what's called a brow pull. It's an additional pull that's attached that comes out to the side here to give you a little bit more headroom in the middle of the tent since it's a side entry. So that will give you a little bit more structure and since your vestibules actually tie off to that on both sides, uh, it's probably better in the wind. I don't necessarily think it's gonna be that much better, but uh, it's definitely gonna be a little bit better because this thing sucks. I don't really backpack in a lot of areas that have like a ton of high winds. Here in Ohio, that's really not an issue at all. I actually got to test it out in some high winds and it actually did just fine. So we're at the back of the tent here where the rain fly comes all the way to the ground. Nemo. The Nemo Hornet tents have this weird little cutout where it comes up from the ground and over. And what it is, is they basically have uh, this sill material that comes up on the inner bug net. So you don't really need the rain fly because it is waterproof. But that's kind of the best thing about these double wall shelters is that your rain fly gets wet and the inner bug net completely stays dry. Now the one man Nemo, not that bad. It comes up maybe four or five inches from the ground. Not a deal breaker. But the Hornet 2P comes up like, I'm talking like a foot or two. That cutout is huge. Like why? Nemo, you had a perfect two-person double wall shelter. Why did you decide to make it a one in seven eighths walled shelter? It doesn't make sense to me. I will say the one thing about that, they did the right thing in making that the head end. So all these tents are a little bit wider at the head end, shorter at the foot end as far as width goes. That section where it's cut away in the Nemo, that's the head end. So that's good. If it was the foot end, that's really bad because you never really know where your feet are uh, in your sleeping bag. And if you're touching the wall, you always sleep with your head up if you're on a little bit level ground so you might be sliding down your pad and not realize it wake up with condensation on your foot box the fact that they put that little cut out as your head end where you're a little bit more aware of your surroundings that's a good thing but i still just think it's stupid completely pointless now i kind of get why they do it because a lot of these tents you'll see they have what's called like a, a privacy guard in the bug net this is what i like in bug nets i like my inner net tent to go all the way to the ground. I'm not really too worried about splashback a lot, which is why a lot of these tents have like bathtub style floors. And uh, the older style of this actually had this sill or sill nylon or sill poly, I'm not sure what it is. It came up kind of high, I think only in the front and it would taper back. And that's good for splashback, but really it's on these tents for privacy so that if you want to camp like around other people and it's not gonna rain, you want your, your tarp off for the night. I think those are stupid. I don't want that at all. I like full maximum breathability so I can tie out my tarp really far and high and get lots of good airflow ventilation in my tent. And that's how Nemo is able to get rid of that extra material of the tarp. I think it's stupid because there's so many times when I want a double wall shelter to be able to throw the wet rain fly in the outer pocket of my bag, throw the bug net that's dry into my pack, and then, you know, at lunch or later on in the day, I can just pull that rain fly out, dry it out, and it's just good to keep everything separate. I don't know, like an eighth of the, the inner net tent of the Nemo Hornet is gonna be soaked. That tent would have been awesome if they would have brought that rain fly all the way to the bottom and get rid of the privacy guard. Like, I don't care about that stuff. You guys might, but you're wrong. All right, enough about that. But that's another great design about the new Big Agnes tents. They did away with the privacy guard, the sill that went all the way up. Uh, I get what they're going for there. Like I said, I don't like it. I don't care if people are looking at me, like whatever. I want to be able to just look left and look right and just see out into the woods. So I slept without the rain fly on this one night uh, out there in Washington and it was gorgeous. Had it not been for the Hornet 2P having that big cutout in the back, I might have got it. Uh, if it was the one man version, I probably would have. I like that tent for a lot of reasons. I will say it's ugly. I'm just not a fan of the green. I mean, it looks okay. There's definitely worse looking tents out there. I mean, I do own a purple tent. The color of that Nemo green, it's just gonna be really dark. I've mentioned in other videos before. I like tents that have white or gray rain flies. As you see, this one was very subtle. It's just gonna like disperse the light a little bit. It's not gonna be too bright in there, but it's also gonna let in a lot of that like natural light. And I really like that. So this looks great. Another great improvement. They got rid of the stupid yellow of the old fly creeks. Those things were hideous. And like I always kind of wanted that tent or this tent, but I didn't want that yellow. It was just hideous. Now they have a nice 
uh, like a taupe, like a nice light brown. Uh, the tarp, as you saw, was like a almost like a light gray or a light tan. Very subtle, very nice, good looking color combination. When you're picking a tent, don't worry about what color it is. Obviously, you want to look at the usability, the functionality, if this tent is going to be right for you before you worry about anything that has to do with what it looks like. But like I said, this is a good looking color combination. And a tent that is not a good looking color combination is the Tiger Wall. So picture a beautiful looking tent just like this, and then you just piss all over it. Then you have the Tiger Wall. It's just this nasty looking yellow color. Now you can get it in a couple other different versions. Uh, there's a platinum version that's like, I think light blue and light gray. It looks okay. Uh, it might weigh like a couple grams or a couple ounces less. I just can't get past the nasty yellow color of the Tiger Wall tent. Now I'm not gonna say that's entirely why I chose this one, but I'd be lying if I said I was picturing laying in my tent and just looking out in the middle of the day and just seeing nothing but yellow. And yes, it persuaded my opinion. Now all three of these tents, great options. They all are right around the two pound mark for uh, the two person versions. This one is definitely the lightest by a couple of ounces. Two pounds is a good weight for a, a single solo backpacker in my opinion. I'd like to say that color did not sway my opinion on these tents, but I feel like it did. No joke, when I was at the Outfitters, I had all three of these tents in my lap reading the specs, even though I'd already researched the one-man version. I was catching up, uh, brushing up on the two-man, and I'm sitting on the floor like this, and the Nemo was the first one I put back because of that rain fly. So when it came down to the Tiger Wall in this, this one is lighter, and it, it takes up a smaller footprint. I, I don't need two vestibules. I don't need two doors. And there was actually one spot where... Uh, beautiful campsite on top of this rock and there was no space for me to set up one side vestibule it was long enough that i could that use this tent the way it sits and and that's all there is to it and i've experienced so many times when i'm looking for a tent spot and i know the advantage to having a small tent now that's not saying a big tent couldn't work in any of the situations that i use them in it's just one of my pet peeves it's one of the things i like uh like i said i don't need big vestibule space because i have a two-man tent here all to myself. I love the color. It doesn't look like a banana. Now I know some of you are thinking, Bryce, you made a mistake. You should have went with a tiger wall. It's a better tent. You don't know what you're missing. Beautiful golden yellow soothes you at night. You have no right to compare the Fly Creek to the tiger wall. You don't have one. You don't know what you're talking about. And the truth is, I kind of do because I bought that one too. This glorious piss stain mesh is the Tiger Wall UL1. It's just a really good deal. I mean, new with tags, good deal. Couldn't pass it up. And I figured you guys would probably want me to give it a try anyway. So we're going to give it a shot. I'm going to hate on that in another video, but that's going to do it for this one. Click over here to check out the full gear list that I took to Washington last month. This month? It was this month. But thank you guys for watching. Click subscribe, leave a comment below, hit that little notification bell, and I'll see you guys on the next one.